This video is brought to you by Nano, creators of virtual reality tools for immersive molecular visualization and interaction. Follow the link in the video description to download Nano and explore molecules yourself. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about primary structure, which of course refers to the order or specific sequence of amino acids linked in a polypeptide chain. Okay, when you have a primary structure, that, that order, that sequence of amino acids is read from left to right from N to C, which means from the amino terminus to the carboxy terminus. That is how you read the actual order, okay, in, in order. Uh, and it's held together by peptide bonds, okay, peptide bonds, whoops. Peptide bonds, which are covalent amide linkages, uh, they hold together primary structure. Okay. Um, and so what does that look like over here? Because I've drawn a little peptide over to the right here. Um, so the backbone of this polypeptide chain is NCC. Okay, there's an NCC backbone. So here's the, starting off with this N. We got N and then we got the, the alpha carbon, right? That's C and the carbonyl carbon C. That's one amino acid, okay? Then I have another NCC. That's another amino acid, N C C, it's another amino, another amino acid, and then I have N C C. So I have another amino acid there. And we've got those different R groups. Now I haven't indicated specifically those R groups being different, but um, the order in which this this um, peptide would be read would be from N to C, so left to right this way. Okay, uh, this is the amino terminus here, and this is the carboxy terminus here. Okay, N to C. Now um, each of those R groups would define um, what amino acid that is. So here, this would be the, the R group for amino acid number one, this would be R group number two, R group number three, R group number four. Um, and that. so here we have four amino acids linked together by peptide bonds, which are amide linkages. And an amide just looks like this. An amide is uh, some carbonyl next to um, a nitrogen like that, okay? Um, and so the peptide bonds are between each amino acid. So I went through and marked NCC for all of them. So I have the first NCC and then I have a bond to the next one. So this bond right here is the peptide bond between this amino acid and the next one. Okay. And then I have NCC and then I have this bond. That's the amide bond, the peptide bond. Then I have NCC and then I have this peptide bond and I have NCC and then um, there's no next amino acid over here. So there's, there's just those three peptide bonds holding the four amino acids together. Okay. Um, and so, so if I were to go through and read the order of this, I would just mention, uh, this amino acid first, whatever, based on its R group. And then this one, uh, right in here. And then this one, so this would be amino acid number one, amino acid number two, amino acid number three and amino acid number four. And that would be the actual order, the actual primary structure. Okay, so let's let's actually use an example. So this is actually pretty, something pretty important. So two peptides that we're gonna show here that have the same amino acid content, but different amino acid sequences, which is important. Um, so they have the same amino acids. They're just linked in a different order, okay, different sequences. Okay, so let's check them out. So peptide one, QHGLFA. So Q, glutamine, H, histidine, G, uh, glycine, L, leucine, F, phenylalanine, A, alanine. And so um, over to the left, this would be the amino acid that is on the amino terminus. And then over here to the right, we have alanine, the carboxy terminal um, amino acid. And over here, peptide two, we have the same amino acids, just in a different order, HFA, QLG, as opposed to QHG, LFA. So here, this is the amino terminal amino acid. And then over here, we have the carboxy terminal amino acid, this is the glycine. So they're the same amino acid content, but different amino acid sequences. And therefore, they would actually have different structures because I don't know if I mentioned this before, I have it written down, of course, but I don't think I explicitly mentioned it. The primary structure is what determines the overall 3D structure of the protein. Um, the actual order of the amino acids will plays a gigantic role in determining how that protein or the, how that polypeptide will fold into a protein. 
And obviously this is a simple example with six amino acids here, but you could apply the same, same concept to much larger polypeptides. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so you can have actually the same amino acid content, but different amino acid sequences and you get entirely different proteins. Okay. Um, cool. So just as an important note or a noteworthy note, um, Mutations, of course, um, mutations that result in the changes to the primary structure can alter the overall 3D shape and thus the function of a protein. So an example is sickle cell disease. Um, there's a missense mutation specifically in um, the beta globin gene of hemoglobin. Okay, And so we get uh, the hemoglobin protein ends up being different. Um, and of course, mutations in the DNA can alter DNA. Uh, protein structure. And so uh, sickle cell disease or a missense mutation in, in, the, in the beta globin gene um, has a, a, a significant impact. And so um, normally that globin gene, uh, its normal primary structure has, it looks, it's, this is not, it's a, this is of course not its entire structure, but there's a proline and, and two glutamates. Um, but in the sickle cell primary structure, we have a proline, a valine, and a glutamate. So the difference between these two is that in the normal one, we have a glutamate and in the sickle cell, uh, the only difference is that this one has a valine. Okay, so that's a one amino acid different. Okay, and as far as their side chains, proline side chain is neutral. Um, glutamate side chain is acidic, so it's negatively charged. Um, whereas in this in this one over here, proline also still neutral. Valine is neutral, not negatively charged. And glutamate over here is negatively charged. So there's a difference there, and that difference. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all kinds of crazy details right now, but that is that is important because that just that one amino acid change results in a gigantic difference in terms of what the cells look like in um, normal individuals that are uh, that don't have the disease and then individuals who do have sickle cell disease. So uh, normally um, people have uh, red blood cells that look like this and they're like little circles that have these little dimples in them, okay? Um, whereas individuals with sickle cell disease have um, sickle shaped red blood cells that look kind of like moons like this. And um, uh, there are a lot of different uh, detriments as far as, far as their health. Um, so the whole idea though is that just a single amino acid change in a certain protein, that hemoglobin protein um, in red blood cells has a drastic impact on the structure uh, of, of that hemoglobin and as an extension uh, of these red blood cells. So um, so yeah, so primary structure is imp incredibly important to understand. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.